Let's go to the trial. It is now the next day. Nope. Just so you know, I'm not gonna take sides. Uh huh. Are you? Are you? Message received loud and clear. Good, because I don't like this one bit. And Daddy should be. You and Daddy should be on the same team. So, sorry, Trucy. Wow, she's really mad. Not my fault! I'm sorry too, little lady. This is all my fault. I'm just worried things will never be the same between Daddy and Apollo. Well, remember when we did the exact same thing in Dual Destinies? Where Apollo was like, I'm gonna go off on my own and do my own thing. Yeah, and look, we're fine. We were fine. If they go through with this, is that all? Well, I wouldn't worry about that. That's the way it is with us men. We may fight, but we don't burn bridges. Really? Sure, one minute we're trading blows and the next we're having a drinks together. We're simple creatures at heart. <laughs> I sure, sure hope you're right. Sorry I'm late, Apollo. You're like a day and a half late. Where the hell have you been, Athena? Athena, there you are. What happened with you and Mr. Wright yesterday? Oh, uh, about that. I ended up going to the wrong airport. See, this is the thing I mean. Athena's supposed to be like a technological whiz and kind of a prodigy, right? She can't even fucking use GPS correctly. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. And I know there's a lot of love for, for her out there and a lot of people get like really up in arms when I talk shit. But sometimes I'm just like, why did you guys write her like this? I was waiting there thinking his flight was really late and before I knew it, I dozed off. By the time I woke up, it was already dark. I figured something like that had happened. Being late and dozing off are the two things you do best. Ugh, guilty as charged. So then I take it you have no idea what today's case is about. Not a clue, sorry. She could, I mean, this is also true, but there's just a lot of times where I'm like, I'm just like, man, I'm getting like Maya vibes from the things you're saying. And in that case, I'd rather just have Maya. Like, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Athena. Um, what is today's case about, if I might ask? Another locked room mystery? A suspect with a flimsy alibi? Ooh, or a dying message? Sorry, strike three. You're out. It's a civil case. A civil case? You act like I'm speaking Swahili here. It's just the right anything agency specializes in criminal law, or so I thought. In civil cases, there are no prosecutors, right? Instead, both parties retain an attorney. Right. And the other attorney is someone you know very well. Really? Who? The trial will begin shortly. Please proceed to the courtroom at once. Okay, let's do this. I'm fine. Apollo, wait, who's the other attorney? You'll see soon enough. And where's Mr. Wright? No time to explain, let's go. Uh, okay, right behind you. Yeah, cause you're gonna like piss your pants when you see what's happening. <sighs> Court is now in session. All rise. You guys don't have to rise unless you want to. Though. Court is now in session. Oh, um, <clears throat> Athena. Um, is some, um, is this some sort of practice session? <laughs> a mock trial, perhaps? Uh, no. It, no, it's not, Your Honor. It's the real deal, Your Honor. Hmm, so then you two have had a falling out. <laughs> I won't have you using my courtroom for that, you know. It's nothing like that, Your Honor. 
Exactly. It just so happens that we have different clients in this case. I see. Well, here's to hoping this has no adverse effect on your working relationship. <laughs> you can say that again. I had no idea we'd be going up against the boss today. Well, that's your fault for not, like, checking. Uh, you sure this is a good idea, Apollo? What, do you want to switch sides? Honestly, I'd rather be anywhere but here right now. Well, at least she is here. I'm really going to need her help. Mr. Justice. Yeah, yes? Don't expect me to pull any punches just because you're the opposing lawyer. As I said, the kid gloves are off. And come what may, they'll stay off. Same here, Mr. Wright. If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you'll get. Good. Good, let the hate flow through you. It's waiting for the judge to be like, please don't fight in the courtroom. Geesh, you guys are really chomping at the bit, aren't you? Uh, I don't mind a good fight between co-workers. Just keep the civil case civil. What the hell, judge? Wow, you probably watch like some like bad videos on YouTube. Now then, if the plaintiff would take the stand, we may begin. Get out here, Emma. I know it's you. Never mind. That's not the plaintiff. The plaintiff is this dick. Sir, we don't allow uh, those things in here. Oh, his the voice. Second. Noble judge, members of the gallery, good day to you. I am Paul Attisham. This is but the start of my epic campaign, and you all have the honor of witnessing it. I believe the youth of this country are all very future. Too long have they been looked down on and given the cold shoulder. So, to them I say, ask not what you can do for your country. Uh, uh, okay. Mr. Attishan, what is that crazy contraption you're riding? Uh, I just want to, I want to ask you guys, uh, was anything that I said in that speech of our voice, was it, could you understand what I was saying? Because my captions did not like that at all. <laughs> it's my custom made election winning campaign mobile. Beautiful, isn't it? You're at a witness stand, not at a campaign podium. So come out of there this instant. Bleh. Did he really? He needs to have his stupid nameplate? I hate this man. You could hear it pretty well. Okay, just making sure that it was like, that you could understand what I was saying. All right, now with the plaintiff's attorney, Mr. Wright, please explain what... The, the complaint filed against the defendant. Okay. Mr. Addison's complaint against the defendant is simple. The defendant, one Dirk Sadmadi, stole my client's family heirloom, the Crystal of Ami Fey. Mr. Addison merely seeks its return. This feels like it could be a case on Judge Judy. And this wouldn't have happened if that archaeologist hadn't kicked the bucket. I see. Well, Mr. Justice, let's have your opening statement, if you would. The defense asserts that the item in question is the Founder's Orb, a sacred relic from Korain. Hmm, go on. It seems someone asked an archaeologist, Dr. Archie Bluff, to study the orb. Dr. Buff, er, I said Bluff. Dr. Buff determined that it was the Koranese national treasure known as the Founder's Orb. The very orb was stolen from a treasure room in Koran several weeks ago. <laughs> Why, yes, I saw the news report about that. The theft of a Kuranese national treasure caused quite an uproar in the kingdom. Well, we believe that it was not, in fact, a theft in the traditional sense. 
but rather it was spirited out of Korain by someone for Dr. Buff to study. You don't say, and? Around that time, an acquaintance of the defendant learned of Dr. Buff. He made contact with the doctor who agreed to hand over the orb. Apparently, the doctor wanted nothing to do with it once he learned it had been stolen. Seems that you have a transfer agreement between both parties. Mr. Sadmati also agreed to return the Founder's Orb to the Kingdom of Karain. Once the doctor verified it was the real thing. I see, so this dispute centers on... Whether the item in question is the Founder's Orb or the Crystal of Amifei. That, in turn, will determine the object's rightful owner. I'd better bring my A-game. Going up against Mr. Wright won't be a walk in the park. Hmm, come to think of it, the name Dirk Sadmati sounds awfully familiar. But I can't recall where I've heard it. Because you can't recall anything, sir. You're, you're far too old. Oh, um, it's probably your imagination, Your Honor. He's just a tourist, after all. Hmm. My imagination, you say? Are you sure about this, Apollo? He's a wanted criminal in Karain, isn't he? In Karain, yes. Here, he's just a tourist. Very well, let's begin the proceedings. Bailiff, would you bring in the first witness? Oh. It's Emma! Thanks for showing us her feet, I guess? Emma? Show some manners. We're in court. I know, it's just... This is a civil trial, so I was surprised to see a detective take the stand. I had her do some digging on Dr. Buff. What for? You disappoint me, Apollo. First, you know I'm not just a detective. I'm a forensic scientist. Do try to remember that. Second, you owe Mr. Wright an apology. After all he's done for you, you have some nerve. Uh, first, I'm sorry, and second, I'm really just trying to do my job. You'll never get anywhere with that attitude. Wow, Emma, thanks. Take some advice from someone who's been there. Why do I feel like I'm on trial here? Detective Sky, your testimony, if you please. Okay. The, uh, witness testimony. The doctor's dark secret. What? What? The police have had their eyes on Dr. Buff for some time, and just today, a number of stolen artifacts were discovered in his study. Among them were a priceless urn and a statue that were stolen from the Fey Clan. It seems the doctor would do anything to study these artifacts, including steal them. As for the relic at the center of this dispute, he likely stole it from the Adishan residence. The doctor is a thief? Why am I just hearing about this now? Well, cat burglar isn't something he'd put on his resume. He was more careful than that. But the fact is, he was a classic treasure hunter. W okay. A treasure hunter, huh? Like people who have thrilling adventures in exotic places, risking life and limb for glory? I doubt Dr. Buff was the star of his own hit movie series, Athena. Out of respect for the dead, I will say that Dr. Buff wasn't doing it to get rich. Apparently, he only wanted to borrow the artifacts to study them. He would then return them as soon as his research was finished. According to the doctor's child, he would even repair or restore some of the artifacts he stole before returning them. He believed he was honoring the dead by discovering their history through artifacts. But whatever lofty ideals he held, it makes no difference. Larceny is larceny. Yes, he certainly sounds no different from a regular thief to me. So, let's say for a moment that the Doctor really did moonlight in stealing artifacts. Might he not have stolen the Founder's Orb and Corain and brought it back here himself? Nope. 
There's no record of him traveling overseas over the past few years. Plus, he couldn't very well leave his reclusive child at home all alone. Hmm, then this really must be the crystal of Ame Fei. Yes, he stole it from the Addison residence, probably so he could study it. Ooh, this is the left hook I did not need. I bet you never saw that coming, Apollo. Thanks, Athena. I'm glad to know that you're helping. Yeah, when Mr. Wright said the kid gloves were off, he wasn't kidding. Donk. Mr. Justice, you may proceed with your cross-examination. I mean, at least it's nice doing this with uh, Phoenix, because he's not just shouting insults at me constantly. He's just doing his side of things. Just today, a number of stolen artifacts from uh, study. Da, da. Seems the doctor would do anything to study the artifacts, including steal them. As for the relic at the center of this dispute, he likely stole it from the... Was it really there? Hold it! You claim he stole a family heirloom from the Addison residence, but claiming something doesn't make it true. Unfortunately, it is true. Uh, how can you be so sure? A police report was filed concerning the theft, one year ago, in fact. A what? A whole year ago? Boop, boop, boop. August 25th of last year, to be exact, the report states, and I quote, The crystal of Amife was discovered to be missing from the Addison storehouse at 10 a.m. The storehouse lock had been picked. Signed, Paul Addison Wimperson. Wimperson. Well, a year-old report certainly lends the plaintiff's claim credence. The doctor could really have stolen the crystal of Amife. Not only that, Your Honor, but the Founder's Orb was only found to be missing several weeks ago. That is nearly a year after the crystal's theft was reported. Therefore, I believe we must consider the orb and the crystal to be two separate items. Paul Addison Wimperson? Not the most awe-inspiring tale end, is it? See why he cut it. Not that he inspires confidence without it. Still, I'd probably do the same in his shoes. Okay, robbery report. Police report was filed about the crystal theft a year ago. The theft of the Founder's Orb was only reported a few weeks ago. The Crystal's police report was filed way before the orb was found missing. Wait a sec. Oh, Paw 711 is, I was about to say, Wimperson. That's Wimperson. I deciphered the cracks, but I've yet to crack the riddle. The okay, pay crystal orb is the key. But yeah, because it doesn't have like, I don't know why they wouldn't put the time on there or the date, but yeah, P-A-W-7-1-1. That's gotta be Paul, I yeah, okay. That's Wimperson. That's Wimperson, man. Suggest the stolen relic is the crystal of Ami Fey, as Mr. Ashton Ast Wimperson asserts. I doubt the police report is a fake. After all, Emma is the one who submitted it as evidence. Still, I feel like something we learned in that police report is important somehow. Yeah, it's the name. Okay, damn. See, sometimes I don't know what the hell's going on, and sometimes I'm like, hey, that doesn't add up. Um... But it would, it would be different from him stealing it, because if he gave it to him to study, then... Objection! Objection! Ha-ha! I was right, the music stopped. The doctor stole the relic from the plaintiff? Are you sure? Because that statement doesn't agree with a certain piece of evidence. What do you mean? Take a look at this. What about it? This contains an email from the doctor's computer. 
Email? In that little piece of plastic? Oh, I forgot the judge is a literal dinosaur. I'm afraid I don't understand. You don't understand a lot of things, though. So. Uh, um, this stick here can store all sorts of computer data. I still don't get it. Here, just look at this. Apparently, the doctor was reporting his research and findings to a certain individual. Now, take a look at this. It's the police report Detective Sky presented to this court. You can see the plaintiff's legal name on it. Paul Attishan Wimperson. Mm, I can see why he dropped Wimperson from his name, but that's hardly breaking news. Look closer, Your Honor. Ah, yeah, that's right. His initials that have, Phoenix. And now I'm making you do the face. Right, the plaintiff's full legal name is Paul Attishan Wimperson. You hear Ellie Stucker bluffing even though you can't see- Yeah, exactly. Because we played him for so long, we know his little, like, ticks. Mm. Now, consider this. The email's recipient address starts with three letters. P-A-W? Duh! Don't tell me! Oh, but I will anyway! <laughs> The individual who hired the doctor to study the disputed item is none other than Paul Attishan Wimperson. Wait, th th then that means... Exactly. He wouldn't have asked the man who stole his family heirloom to study it. Therefore, how could this possibly be the crystal of Ami Fei? Ah! Yeah, take that. Jerks, who are also my friends, but right now are kind of being jerks. We never checked the doctor's emails. We couldn't even figure out the password to his computer. The plaintiff willingly left the orb in the doctor's care so he may study it. At the behest of his benefactor. Wait. Then what about the police report? I have all the details of the theft right here. It's probably for another relic, the real crystal of Ami Fei. He's just using the report as a way to claim that our orb is actually his stolen crystal. And how are you so certain that PAW refers to my client's initials? Maybe the email's recipient was a dog lover. Perhaps, so let's get to know your client a little better, shall we? Mr. Paul Addison Wimperson. I suppose shutting down detractors is all a part of a politician's job. Answer me this, Mr. Addison Wimpersim. What is your birthday? What is your birthday? My birthday? It's July 11th, but what's that to you? Yep, 7 Eleven. Oh, I see. You can address birthday gifts to my office. But full disclosure, I only accept gifts valued at $1,000 or more. What a fucking dick. Oh, yep. Phoenix is like, see, you, you son of a bitch. Hmm? Why has everyone gone silent? How can anyone be that self-centered? Oh, right. Politician. <laughs> Did everyone hear that? He said July 11th. July 11th, or rather 7-Eleven, matches the numbers on the email address. Both the name and the birthday are a match. I hardly think that's a coincidence. That's also like, please don't pull, put your name and also your birthday in like your usernames or anything like that. Just don't. Wait. Why, you sneaky- Well, I didn't really have to sneak, I just asked and you gave it to me. Looks like someone finally decided to join the conversation. Would the plaintiff care to explain? I, I would like to say that is quite, uh... Quite what? 
qu quite a thing you've said. Um, any other thoughts? No thoughts, head empty. No further comments. I stand by my previous statement. Hold it! Hold it, yeah. You can't just walk away. Even politicians have to explain themselves in a court of law. I'm afraid I simply don't know how it happened. <laughs> I can't possibly explain matters outside of my purview. Perhaps it was a mistake on the part of my secretary? Oh no you don't, you slippery eel. Mr. Wright, would you care to respond? I won't argue your assertion. My client lent the treasure in question to the doctor and asked him to study it. It seems that much is a fact. Now we're getting somewhere! However, it is no bearing on the issue of ownership. Is that right, Phoenix? Um, how so? Mr. Addison, I fully understand your position here. You had to hide the fact that you sent the crystal out to be studied. Your family would have been very upset if they had found out. It's a family heirloom, after all. You've got to be kidding me. Mr. Wright is, well, <laughs> right, of course. But then, he always is. That's why he's my lawyer. <laughs> the crystal is a precious Attishan family heirloom and has been for centuries. But Dr. Buff was so eager to study its proud heritage, I just couldn't say no. I didn't even tell my grandfather. <sighs> but in order to win back the backing of your so-called benefactor, you were going to give what you claim to be the crystal of Ami Fei to that person. Which is why you love it. Yeah, exactly. He's learned a thing or two from his boyfriend, Edgeworth. Edgeworth, ew. What if Edgeworth is actually, like, sitting on the floor next to him, like, behind the podium, and he's like, okay, now do this. And Phoenix is like, yes. Got it. Or he's got, like, an earpiece. I'm really sad that they, they were like, yeah, Edgeworth is here, and then we didn't get to see him. Come on, guys, don't do that. You were gonna give away a precious family heirloom? Just like that? He's totally under the podium. I, I was going to explain everything to grandfather later, <laughs> honest. My client's grandfather is very proud of his grandson for following in his footsteps. And if refusing him would have meant dashing the dreams of his darling grandson, I doubt the kindly old man could have said no. Decent thoughts that you mentioned it? Well, actually, that was the first thing I thought of too, but I didn't mention that because this is a game for everyone. Well, grandchildren are meant to be spoiled. And I mean, if you wanted to see more of that, you could probably just go on Twitter or something. And uh, there's probably plenty of complex illustrations about that. That's what grandfathers are for. Yes, judge. Your honor, please. I mean, it's been in the family for centuries. My grandfather thinks highly of my talents as a politician. And that's why he entrusted me with this very important name placard today. <gasps> it's just a placard! <laughs> I don't care about that! Oh, Abe. Uh, so I'm sure he would have been okay with me uh, using the crystal as I saw fit. <sighs> Grandpa, spoiled little brat. I think the judge is buying it, Apollo, because the judge buys anything. No surprise there, he's always going on about his own grandchild after all. Uh, excuse me, can I leave now, Mr. Wright? I believe my work here is done. By all means, Detective Sky, thank you for your assistance. You're welcome. It's nice to testify as a civil, in a civil trial once in a while. See you around. Hey, bye. <laughs> Seems the facts have changed somewhat. Mr. Addison Wimperson apparently lent his family heirloom to Dr. Buff. Mr. Justice, how would the defense like to proceed? Oh, um, all right, now what? Apollo, let's hear what they know about the so-called crystal of Ami Fey. Maybe we can find some inconsistencies in their statements. Right. 
Okay then, Mr. Wright, if the item in question really is an Ad Attishan family heirloom, then let's hear all your client knows about it. Hmm, of course. Mr. Addison Wimperson, please tell the defense everything you know about the crystal's origin. All right, now then, listen and learn. This is the tale of the crystal of Ami Fei and the illustrious history of the Addison clan. Are you ready? Our story begins back in the old country when the Addison family reigns supreme. Cool. Glad you're so happy about that. The illustrious history of the Addison clan. My ancestor was praised as a benevolent ruler. He protected the spirit mediums, a minority back then, from the rest of the locals. Some discriminated against them, you see, while others tried to abuse their power. As thanks, Ami Fei gave the crystal she had specially made as a gift to him. I am a descendant of that great lord. As such, my political power and influence is backed by centuries of history. Uh, no. That's not how that works. Well, that developed into a great load of self aggrandizing propaganda fast. Yeah, like, su well, I don't know. To be fair, Witchy, we have run into a lot of super, like, I mean, in the very first game, Mr. Uh, Mr. Red White of Blue Corp. Man, that guy was fucking, he was a piece of work. As you can see, the Crystal of Ami Fei is an heirloom of the esteemed House of Addison. And you have proof that it has always been in the Addison family? Mm, I have someone who gave a statement to that effect. My client's neighbor, the one Eve Shinetto, age 85, gave the following statement. I'm old. The Attishans showed me the crystal back when I was but a lad. What the fuck? Could have been anything else. Can we really trust the memory of an old man? Mr. Justice? Would you care to explain that statement to the judge? <laughs> Fucking Phoenix, you piece of shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I didn't mean... What I'm trying to say is, uh... Never underestimate the memory of your elders. <laughs> Fuck you, Phoenix. Pulling out the old person card. I may forget my verdicts the next day, but the memories of my past are clear as day. Yes. Therefore, I find Mr. Ive Shinetto's statement to be perfectly credible. Wow, did you see how Mr. Wright cut the judge on his side? Yeah, oh, you jerk. That's a definitely a trick I want up my sleeve. Uh, you're not helping, Athena. You may cross-examine the witness, Mr. Justice, but don't say anything about old people ever again. Now let's read this history, okay. Uh, protect the spirit mediums or minority? Yeah, okay, cool. Wait a second, let me check something. Founder offers divine protection. We tell them a motif from Korean founding period. Cause that's Korean, like, yeah, so she wouldn't have that, would she? Well, let's try it. Objection! Objection! Haha! You stated that Ami Fei had the crystal made for your ancestor. So am I to assume it was made in Japan? That's right! The craftsmanship is unbeatable! Well, that's strange. I don't see how your so-called crystal could have been made here. What are you talking about? It's quite obvious if you take a closer look at this. 
Because, yeah, on there it totally says, like, it's, uh... Original, like, Korean, like, founding Korean, which is a long time ago. Take a look at this distinctive design here. According to Dr. Buff, it's a Mitama motif dating back to the early days of the Kingdom of Korean. Does it have a Made in China sticker? That'd be terrible. You just turn it over and we're like, oops. I guess this doesn't belong to anybody. The Kingdom of Korain, hmm? And you base this on, uh... Here! This piece of evidence, Your Honor. These are the doctor's research notes on the Founder's Orb. This is the box in which the orb was originally stored. It features the same pattern as the one found on the orb. Hmm, they do look like the same pattern. Therefore, I assert that... The disputed item must have been made in the Kingdom of Korain. Ah! Oh no! Ah, my placard! <laughs> you dumb bastard! The Korain channeling technique originated in the Kingdom of Korain. And Amefe is known to have traveled here to train. With that in mind, what's to say she didn't bring that pattern back with her? Objection! <laughs> but since this is clearly a Kuranese design, not even you can deny the possibility that it was made there in the kingdom of Korain. Objection! Anything's possible to some extent. That doesn't make it true. So you can't conclude that the orb is from Korain based solely on the pattern. If it were that simple, I could just as easily say it's Japanese. Dang, Phoenix, you're gonna die on this hill. Also, I thought we were on other sides of... Isn't the court usually like the other way around? I don't know. I have to agree with Mr. Wright. The pattern alone proves nothing. But that also means there's no basis to claim the item in dispute was made in Japan, either. Hmm. At this rate, we're going nowhere fast. He's right, we're just spinning our wheels here. Wonder if we have any evidence that could break the stalemate. Uh, no, we don't have anything like that right now. There doesn't seem to be anything we can use, at least not at this point. Well, unless we can find something, this trial won't be going anywhere. Stupid! No! <laughs> you just taped? Wow! Ooh, that's much better! God, this guy. What's his deal? I have a suggestion. Why don't we consider this from a different angle? You love considering things from different angles, Apollo. I mean, Phoenix. Sorry, I was looking at Apollo's name when I said that. I'm listening. What if... The Defiant Dragons really were authorized to take possession of the relic. Hmm, I'm afraid I don't know where you're going with this, Mr. Wright. Consider the Orb Transfer Agreement, which states, I agree to hand over the Founder's Orb to the Defiant Dragons if I will come to no harm. What if, as the last part suggests, this was written under duress? That would render the agreement null and void. What are you suggesting, Mr. Wright? While you were on your little cave expedition, I was investigating Dr. Buff's accident. And there was something you overlooked, Mr. Justice. Namely, that his accident might have actually been murder. What? M murder We should think about that every time. Because that's literally what happens every single time we come into the courtroom. Mr. Wright, you do realize such statements are not to be made lightly. Are you suggesting the doctor was murdered by the Defiant Dragons? Yes, but follow me on this for a sec. The books that came tumbling down were from the archaeology shelf. However, among that mountain of books was a single volume on psychology. What's more, there was some blood on it. 
And you feel this is important because... The books that came tumbling down were from the top shelf. The archaeology books. We know this because the doctor's books were meticulously organized by subject. Archaeology took up the entire shelf, so that psychology book is completely out of place. Come to think of it, the shelves were arranged quite carefully. It's also worth noting that psychology books only take up a tiny part of the bottom shelf. You might wonder why a book on psychology was found amid the pile of archaeology books. But I believe I can explain that with a single out-of-place book was doing there. The doctor was struck from behind while selecting a psychology book from the shelf. And that's when the blood got on the book. Precisely. And to make it look like an accident, he was buried under a mountain of archaeology books. Actually, that's... Damn, Phoenix! Objection! How do you... What the fuck, man? Well, well, wait a second. This is all just speculation, uh, right? Or do you have proof that it was murder? Of course I do! What do I look like? Not Phoenix Wright? Y y y you do? <sighs> On a hunch, I had Detective Sky examine the doctor's head wound. She found that he'd been struck by the corner of some object or another. Yeah, he's bluffing through. Well, maybe, but it's okay. It, he's really got me going. Wait, what? A wound like that could have re couldn't have resulted from a fall to the floor, you know. Do you understand what this means, Mr. Justice? The wound makes it crystal clear that Dr. Buff was murdered. Ah, what? Yeah, you owe it. Yeah. Well, that was unexpected. Was it really, though, Athena? We're dealing with Phoenix Wright. Who'd have thought we'd break out of the stalemate like this? He pulled the ladder right out from under us. Still, if he thinks that's enough to make me back down, he's got another thing coming. Even if the cause of death was murder, what makes you think that it was the Defiant Dragons? You should know better than to hurl baseless accusations! Oh, but are they baseless? Did you forget who you were up against, Mr. Justice? Huh? You didn't actually think I'd come to court without witnesses and evidence, did you? What? What are you talking about? I would like to request further testimony from the plaintiff. Specifically, I would like the court to hear how he saw one of the rebels leaving the crime scene. He, he, he saw what? Damn. Look at Phoenix over there, swinging around his big ol' evidence dick. Come on, Phoenix, let us win this one. He can prove it was murder. That's the end of our client's right to the orb. Did he have this up his sleeve the whole time? Ugh, how could Mr. Wright do this to us? He was just waiting to spring this trap. Heh. <laughs> hmm, this trial has taken another unexpected turn. But I must mention, Mr. Wright, uh, that you have yet to identify the murder weapon. The object used to commit the murder was not located at the scene of the crime. The murderer likely disposed of it elsewhere. Dr. Bluff's autopsy report added to the court record. What? Oh, God. I was going to say, what if he what if he killed him with his stupid name placard? <laughs> oh, that would be hilarious. Well, I never thought we'd be deliberating the issue of murder at a civil trial. All right, Mr. Addison Wimperson, your testimony, if you please. Oh, I thought he was hiding under that. Yeah, that thing is going to be destroyed by the end of this. Hm. Prepare to be dazzled. Dazzled by charismatic oration forged in the crucible of campaign battles. <laughs> God, fuck this guy. The Rebel's Crime. That evening, I was walking alone, lost in thought. I passed by the doctor's house, and that's when I saw Mr. Aribal. He was running out the front door. It was around 10 at night. Surely that must have been him fleeing the scene of his crime. 
Excuse me, I need to take a look at stuff. Okay. Between 10 and 11. Cause of death, cerebral hemorrhaging after being struck on the back of the head with the corner of an unidentified object. A vote for me is a vo vote to end such violence. That is my promise to you. That doesn't have anything to do with anything. So the plaintiff saw a possible suspect fleeing from the doctor's residence? And it was within the window of the estimated time of death? Oh, that seems kind of damning. That's horrible! What in the world were you doing there then? Study photo updated in the court record. Addison saw Dots fleeing the scene on the night of the murder. One of the books is stained with coffee. Seems Mr. Aribal was loitering around Corrine Village that day. There's evidence he was in the doctor's study as well. Isn't that right, Mr. Justice? Ah, uh, you mean the suitcase. <laughs> exactly. He must have been in quite the rush to leave that behind. Oh, and by the way, your honor, Mr. Aribal just so happens to be sitting in the gallery today. Ah! See, that's him trying to escape as we speak. <laughs> Bailiff, don't let that man get away. Right, you backstabber, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> All right, the... Counsel slash defense may question the plaintiff slash witness once more. Um, please proceed, Mr. Justice, before I get any more confused than I already am. Okay. So, Mr. Aribal, is that so? Hold it! Where exactly were you when you saw Mr. Aribal? Uh, right here, under this tree. I saw him dashing out of Mr. Buff's, or Dr. Buff's front door. Choom, choom, choom. And he didn't notice you? No, I was hidden by the tree. Is it really only important to know from where the plant? Yes, it always is. Yes, I believe it matters a lot. I ask that it be, please be added to the witness's testimony. None of the shoe when I saw Mr. Arbel. He was running out of the front door. Is that so? Hold it! Hold it! Tell me more. Did you notice anything unusual? Yes, his behavior was incredibly suspicious. His eyes were darting all around as he ran off in total panic. As soon as I saw that, I knew he had done something, and it probably wasn't good. Despite that, you still didn't report it to the police? Who would have thought he had killed Dr. Buff? Not me. That's why I did report him. Man, people say that a lot, and then they're... That's bad. The witness didn't notify the police. Is that an important statement, Mr. Justice? Yes, it is. Yes, it's important. I request that the witness add it to his testimony. <laughs> sure, why not? I had no idea that Dr. Buff was dead. That's why I didn't call the police. Yeah, except we have this fucking photo, you dumb bastard. There's... You can definitely see it from there. Objection. Objection! Come on, bro. Mr. Addison Wimperson, rather than Mr. Aribal. Wasn't there something else that should have had your undivided attention? <laughs> like what? Oh yes, of course. A politician must also keep his finger on the electorate's pulse, so... Shut up. Sorry, but you're way off, actually. I am? Hmm. Would you care to explain, Mr. Justice? If the witness saw Mr. Aribel from this position here... 
then he should have also been able to see the doctor's body. After all, it was right next to a huge window. Why, I believe you have a point there. With the body that clearly visible to the witness, it is unthinkable that he wouldn't have reported it to the police. Ah, yeah, that's right, Phoenix. Hmm, would the witness care to respond? He's asleep. Excuse me? Did he fall asleep? Um, Mr. Addison Winperson? Gross. And you know, I never really understood like the sleepy snot bubble thing and I always hated it because I'm like, man, that's just gross. Why, why was that a thing? Huh? Oh, uh, um, hmm. Uh, there are many sides. <laughs> Any issue. What did I ever do to deserve this? In any case, I'd like the court to acknowledge the inconsistency in the witness's testimony. Mr. Addison Wimperson, did you really see Mr. Arival? Yes! That, no, he, get your ass back here. Where do you think you're going? Oh, I, I thought I'd return to my seat, seeing as I had already answered the question. This isn't some small town hall debate, so you just stay right there until I say we're through. I I'll have to run that by my campaign manager before I... Shut up! Glare. <clears throat> Mr. Addison Wimperson, I think it's time for you to come clean. Huh? So then, does this mean he didn't see Mr. Arable? As your lawyer, Mr. Addison Wimperson, I advise you divulge the matter we discussed. Silence is no longer an option. Uh, are you sure about this? I'm in the midst of running for office. I can't afford to let any strange rumor get out. Don't worry, you won't suffer any blowback for what you're about to reveal. Blowback? I'm not sure I like the sound of that, Mr. Wright. Not to worry, Your Honor. Nothing untoward will come of this, I promise. Now then, Mr. Justice. Remember how it was an anonymous caller that reported the doctor's death? Uh, come to think of it... Yeah, and Emma, who was the first one to discover the body? It seems they wanted to remain anonymous. Oh, it was him! It was him! What a tool. Wait, you're not saying that. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. The anonymous source who contacted the police after discovering the body was... My client, Mr. Paul Attishan Wimperson. What? You don't say. So you see, he played his part as a concerned citizen, quite admirably, if I may say so. Isn't that right? Um, yes, indeed. <laughs> In our society today, there are too many who choose a difference over righteous action. But I don't number among them. That's why I did my duty as a concerned citizen. One might call me the model citizen, one worthy of standing above the rest. God, this guy fucking sucks. What a real standard bearer he is reporting it anonymously. Oh, and by the way, Mr. Justice, wasn't there someone else at the scene of the crime when my client discovered the body? Oh, um, you mean Mr. Aribal? He would have been leaving the doctor's house right around then. Wait, that means... Yes, it does. In short, what my client witnessed was Mr. Arabal fleeing the scene of a heinous crime. Ah! And that's not all. Based on what we've heard so far, Mr. Arabal looked exceedingly suspicious, and that's putting it mildly. We already know the Defiant Dragons threatened the Doctor with bodily harm. And now that they've killed him, the so-called orb transfer agreement is null and void. Darg! Man, Phoenix, calm down. 
I thought we were just playing around, bro. You don't gotta come at me like, like, like that. Don't come at me sideways. Now, Apollo, if we don't come up with some sort of counter-argument, and what sort of evidence do you have? Can you actually prove that it was Mr. Arribal who killed the doctor? That move had desperate written all over it. It's all I've got, so uh, I'm going with it. Evidence? <sighs> I suppose it's true that I don't have any. I knew it! But I do have another witness. Y you do? You should know I always come fully prepared, Mr. Justice. And my new witness will provide testimony proving Mr. Arribal's guilt. Ugh. A new witness? I wonder who it could be. Very well. Bailiff, please summon our new witness. In the meantime, the court will take a brief recess. I would like both sides to use this time to prepare properly. Understood? Got it, Mr. Sir. Jesus. There's a lot going on, guys. Okay, district court. Yeah, I get it. Let me scroll through that faster. Wow, I knew Mr. Wright would pull up, put up a tough fight, but... Yeah, just when I thought we had him, he turned the tables on us. He really is the turnabout terror. We can't let him blindside us again. Looks like they got me again. Three times in one year. That's a new record. <laughs> That's, please, no more new records or bad puns while you're at it. It's hard enough trying to help you as it is. Roger that, I'll be more careful next time. That's, is what Mr. Wright said true? Did you really pay a visit to Dr. Buff that night? I uh, sure did. Can't remember the exact time, though. All I know is he wouldn't hand over the orb. So someone put it in his head that we rebels were dangerous. That's why he threw me out. So the doctor was still alive when Dats last saw him. We'll still have to prove it, though. Better brace yourself, son. The next witness's testimony could make or break this case. Yeah, I know. Hey, where's Trucy? She went to go see her dad. Hmm, maybe she's still mad. <clears throat> More like worried. Worried that this trial would create a rift between you two. And that you might then leave the agency again. <laughs> she has an active imagination. Excuse me, the trial will be resuming shortly. Well, let's go see what new testimony awaits us. May 17th. District Court. Court. Room number six. All right, court is back in session. Mr. Wright, you said you had a witness? Your Honor, I would like to call the lone survivor of the doctor's murder to the stand. Wait, he can't mean that Sarge is here? Uh, you mean Dr. Buff's reclusive son? How did you get him to cooperate? Uh, nothing a little persuasion couldn't handle. The poor child only agreed to help if it meant catching the killer. Getting a kid like that to overcome his fear, now that's impressive. This must be really important testimony for the kid to come out in public like this. Very well, Mr. Wright, please call your witness to the stand. It's not gonna be the kid. It's gonna be the attack helicopter. I just, I feel it in my bones. It's the helicopter, I knew it! <sighs> oh my. Sergeant Buff at your service, sir. He's here as the drone? Really? Um, Mr. Wright, what exactly is the meaning of this? Uh, past trauma has rendered it impossible for the witness to venture into public. Leaving home was hard enough, and it seems leaving the witness lobby was just too much. 
But I would still like to continue with the testimony delivered via this drone. Hmm, I understand it must be terrible to lose one's father like that. But testimony via a remote-controlled toy? Uh, well, let's take things for a spin and see how it goes. Just who's piloting this trial anyway? Judge sure warmed up to the idea fast. He probably thought about his grandchildren again. I think the phrase you're looking for is gave up. You disappoint me, Corporal Justice. Uh, stop shooting. Ag! Defending the man who killed Papa? That's full on treason, soldier. I hereby demote you back to private. Corporal, private? What's he talking about, Apollo? It's a long story. Now then, are you ready to testify, youngster? Locked and loaded, sir. Ready to rain lead down upon the perpetrator. <laughs> oh, boy. What happened that evening? Papa met with someone the night he died. I didn't have eyes on the ground as I'd already mounted my siege defense, but... I did hear him arguing with someone in his study. From my window, I saw the one designated Dats getting ejected from the premises. After that, the man lingered around the perimeter for some time. He must have regrouped and killed my papa in the study later. I just know it. Hmm. So he was thrown out but later returned and committed the murder, did he? Yes, your honor. So the man my client saw really must have been the fleeing Mr. Arebal. Objection! Objection! Right, you backstabbing no good. I, I didn't kill no one. It's the enemy. Ready all missiles and fire! Oh, God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, well, we just killed Dats. <laughs> Capitalist pig, I'll turn you into pork stroganoff. Oh, stroganoff actually does sound really good. And that's just a taste of my ultimate anti-swine weapon. Whoa, it fires missiles too. <laughs> yes, well, the witness is all yours, Mr. Justice. I'm not touching this at all. What happened that evening? But you use the, yeah, you definitely, where's? Equipped with a camera and a microphone. So yeah, you definitely, you lie. You lied. Objection. Objection. Sarge, are you hiding something from me? How dare you question your superior officer like that? Ah, you want to get in the on uh, this stroganoff action with Pig Boy over there, soldier? I want to get on this stroganoff action. Sorry, but I'm afraid lawyers are missile proof. I don't think that's true, and I really don't want to attempt that right now, Apollo. That's a good way to get a game over. But what? Would the defense care to explain? It's simple, Your Honor. Just as he is able to see what is happening in court right now, Sarge was able to see what was happening in the study then. With his cherished drone, of course. Ah, now that you mention it. And to think the answer was right before our eyes the whole time. Sarge, you were perfectly capable of patrolling the study that night, so you must have seen something. I'm hit! What's this strange new weaponry you're using against me? Courtroom warriors don't use guns or missiles because evidence is our weapon of choice. Oh, Apollo, good job. Stealing that, like, directly from Phoenix. And the evidence has exposed your bold-faced lie. My truth bomb, Sarge, has stripped your defenses bare. That's it! Truth bomb? No! Darn! Mayday! Mayday! I'm going down! Okay, well, we destroyed the child. Oh my, are you alright? <coughs> Evidence! Never have I seen such fearsome ordinance. 
Tell it to us straight, Sarge. After all, you want to help your father, don't you? Papa? Yes, you want to find out who killed him, don't you? So please, tell us what you saw that night. It's... it's... it's not what you think. I... I... I didn't see anything, I swear! You sure? You seem awfully stressed for someone who didn't see anything. Gah! No! Not the Stroganoff missiles! Oh no. Sarge, you need to answer my question. Shut your pie hole, maggot! Ah, it'll be a scorching day in Siberia before a lowly private like you orders me around. Hey, you used that line before. What's with him in Siberia, of all places? But if a scorching day is what it'll take, then maybe it's time to turn up the heat. Hey, Athena, you think a therapy session might help? Well, it could help alleviate some of his anxiety. Yeah, my noise level is very high. Plus, I'm picking up a lot of discord in Sarge's voice. That usually means the patient wants to say something but can't for some reason. And in Sarge's case, I imagine whatever's plaguing him is pretty severe. In that case, I leave it to you and your mood matrix magic. You got it. Okay, mood matrix time. Your honor, I believe I can be of help here. Time for a therapy session, is it, Ms. Sykes? Yes, it'll help the witness with his anxiety. Maybe even enough to testify. Then by all means, please bring the poor child out into the light of day. Oh, but I assume this will be all right with you, Mr. Wright? Why not? It's not like we all haven't been through this before. Well, what are you butting in for, lady? This ain't a place on the battlefield for you. Wow, that's sexist. I beg to differ, Sarge. This is just G.I. Jane's always ready for a fight in the courtroom. Really? Really? Yeah, that's what... Oh, come on, guys. What are these references? Wait until you see what I've got in my arsenal. Analytical psychology. With it, I'm gonna blow a big hole in the armor you've built around your heart. Okay, cool. Ah! First evidence, now analytical psychology. Where are these WMDs coming from? Well, if it's a battle you want, bring it on! You may have started this war, but I'm going to end it, corpse woman Sykes. You got it, Sarge. Okay, time to seek out the agony buried deep in your heart. Okay, Mood Matrix, brace yourself. God, so much talking. Just let me figure out this child. Yeah, we know, 100, uh, yay, thank you, Widget. I stayed in my room with my drone that evening. I heard Dats and Papa arguing with each other. Dats got kicked out, but I saw him still hanging around outside. I was in my room, so I didn't know Papa was dead until the next day. So I'm looking for unexpected emotions and unnatural reactions, right? Right, emotions and reactions that don't fit the context of the testimony. When you find one, make sure you point it out to me. Also, remember not to view his emotional reactions in isolation. Sometimes it's important to see how they change from one statement to the next. Okay, I'll give it a try. Okay, so... Okay, surprise and sadness. Lots of surprise and sadness. A lot less surprise. I'm gonna say it's surprise. It. That's strange. You reacted with shock when you discovered your father's body, yet you weren't nearly as shocked as when you saw Mr. Arebal. Normally, you'd expect the death of one's father to be much more impactful. Enemy fire! Direct hit! Okay. That is strange. I wonder what it could mean. Well, we know he wasn't affected by his father's death as he should have been. And I think I know why. Oh? Sarge, you weren't as shocked at seeing your father's body as seeing Mr. Arabel because... You've already seen his body! Sarge... Maybe the truth is you left your room that night. And that's when you saw it, your father's body. I saw no such thing. Really? You didn't see his body. All right then, what did you see? 
Uh, what did you see? Look, Apollo, we lost some noise. So just as I suspected, he really did see something. Sarge, please tell us what you saw. Oh, but, but, but. Um, okay, I, I, the moment I saw it, oh, I, I couldn't bear it. I couldn't stand to lose yet another loved one. Huh? Am I missing something here? Is that why you weren't very shocked when you found out your father was dead? Because you had already sensed that he was a goner somehow? M maybe. Please, Sarge, what was it you saw on the night of your father's murder? Okay. I saw... Ah, 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 okay, God. Okay, now he's just freaking out. Oh, what's happening? I don't like where this is going. Okay, yark. No more, no more, please! Okay, are you gonna... Oh no, Widget, what's wrong? Oh, you stole Widget! I've confiscated your little toy. The battlefield has no place for unauthorized equipment. W widget, wow, that, why are you so bad at keeping people from taking things from you? Apollo, I can't continue the session without him. Oh, man, this just feels like a lot of, <laughs> like stuff like this where I'm like, do they really need to add this in? Like how much drama do you have to try to inject into something? This is already taking hours. Calm yourself this instant witness. I hereby order you to submit to your therapy session. What it blazes? He stole his gavel now. Look at me, I'm judge, jury, and executioner now. I hereby convene a military tribunal. Um, man, this kid is nuts. Whoa, whoa, this has gone way too far. But bailiff, arrest that drone this instant. Okay. Like, this seems incredibly unnecessary. You don't come quietly, I'll... No, stop firing. Wow. Okay, how long, seriously, how long is this gonna go on for? I mean, I, I already understand that, like, a lot's going on. Finally got him back. Okay, nice work. Hmm, this witness is truly a handful. Okay, yeah, his, right now he's like out of control. Miss Sykes, what's the witness's current psychological state? Bad? Let's see, he's emotionally all over the map. So his out of control emotions are in control of him, huh? Does that mean we can calm him down if we can figure out the root cause? Yes, so let's see what we can find. Sarge, can you hear me? Uh, is that you, Corpsewoman Sykes? I'm here. Now, I want you to take a few deep breaths. Just try to relax. Try it with me. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. In, out, in, out. And now, let your emotions take you where they will. Go on, just let it all out. Okay, now you're screaming. All forces, attack! Um, that's the least relaxing breathing exercise I've ever seen. It's okay, she's hacking in! Okay. Yeah, we get it, the emotions are bad. That's what's still hanging around after you got kicked out when... had more fighting and you got worried about Papa. So I left my room, but suddenly... I got dizzy and passed out. I remember a flame lighting up in the room. And Papa grinning with delight. That's when he must have been killed. If only I hadn't passed out. 
Why would he be grinning? Why are there flames? Because I'm pretty sure you're pretty scarred by flames after what happened. That's it! Sarge, you were overcome with shock and fear when you saw those flames, weren't you? Was I? Yes, just six months ago, you and your mother were caught up in an arsonist's blaze. So it's no wonder you would be extremely scared of fire. Man, there was a lot of like, unnecessary information in that and we were just going for the fire. Y yes that does make sense and maybe just maybe your subconscious fear of fire was what caused you to withdraw from the world what do you mean corpse woman sykes uh, in the outside world you were bound to come across all sorts of fire candles cigarettes heck even the grill at dinner at a diner dinner. even if it's not that often just the idea that you might see them grew bigger and bigger until you couldn't shut it out I, I think you might be onto something. Candles, cigarettes, just thinking about them sends a chill down my spine. Wow, things I take for granted. Yeah, bro, because you don't have PTSD. Now I see, I was afraid of the fire. Strange, I didn't even realize it myself. About that fire, Sarge. Can you tell me what it was burning? Just stay calm and maybe something will come to you. Oh, um... Oh! I'm starting to remember! It was... It was that relic! That relic Papa was studying! It was on fire! What? The orb was on fire? Mm-hmm, it's still kind of fuzzy, but yes, the orb was burning right in front of Papa. Why was it burning? And there, in the flames was... Mama? Yes, now I remember! I saw Mama appear amid the dancing flames! That... What? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Info update. Um, that was on fire. And mother, oh God, well that's terrifying. Sorry, child. <laughs> Oof. W what's going on here? Maybe it's a memory from the fire that killed his mother. Hmm, he might be confusing it with what really happened when his father died. So let me guess, more therapy? Yep, but this time, it seems there's an inconsistency in his statements. And I think we should be able to prove it with the evidence at hand. Hope this inconsistency is the key to proving that the relic really is the Founder's Orb. Okay. Okay, Dad's was still hanging around after he got kicked out. Heard more fighting, got worried about Papa. She left her room and suddenly you got dizzy and passed out. Remember a flame lighting up the room and Papa grinning with delight. The relic was on fire and you saw Mama's face inside. Is there a face in there? I mean, I guess we'll present the orb. It's the only thing that makes sense. Objection! Objection! There's an inconsistency in Sarge's testimony. Is that so? Would you be so kind as to point it out to the court? Uh, well, if you're going to put me on the spot- Oh, that's wrong. What? Mm. Oops. Uh, I wish you wouldn't, Your Honor. Okay, wait. Say, Apollo, Sarge is saying that his father was burning the orb when he was killed. But doesn't that seem funny to you? Considering what the doctor was up to that night, it doesn't add up. Well, now that you mention it, I'm pretty sure it's still a fa- Maybe I just was on the wrong statement. Oh. That's when Papa must have been killed. If only I hadn't passed out. Wait, the relic's not on fire this time around, though. Oh, there's blood on the bottom! I didn't notice that before! Dang it. 
So maybe he was killed by the relic? Objection! Objection! Don't blame yourself, Sarge. Oh, so there was... Wait, but that was in a bot. What? I'm so confused. After all, even if you hadn't passed out, the outcome would have been the same. What do you mean? I'm talking about the time of death. Your father wasn't killed right after you left your room. What? What? Explain yourself at once! Private justice? You said you saw your father burning in the orb, right? I said you saw the mother. Oh. But that night, he went out to hide it in a cave. So what you saw, Sarge, was something that happened before your father left to hide the orb. Ah! So you see, you didn't pass out right before he was killed. You passed out right before he left for the cave to hide the orb in the ruins within. So even if I hadn't passed out, that's right, the outcome would have been this exactly the same. That's because your father, Dr. Buff, was killed after he returned from the ruins. And therefore, Sarge, there's no need for you to blame yourself. Oh, I see. Okay, I get it. Jesus, they're using so many fucking ellipses. Y y I y come on. Private Justice, can you really say I bear no blame in this? Why do you ask? I mean, I know it's supposed to add dramatic effect, but I swear, in this case alone, they've done it like 50 times. Because the truth is, if I hadn't engaged in my siege defense, Papa would still be alive. Sarge. Papa wished nothing more than for me to lead a happy, healthy life. That's why he quit his job and moved us out away from the big city. But even then, I didn't have the courage to set foot into the outside world. And in the end, I failed to make Papa's wish come true. Yes, yes, very sad. It is sad. Jesus, please stop. Um, Sarge? If you want to make your father's wish come true, if that's what you really want, then who's to say it's too late? Why don't you take the first step now? My first step? That's right. You can cast off all your regret. You can stop standing still and start moving forward. You have the power within you. I know from experience. I know what it's like to feel like you do. But only you... Only you can decide to take that first step and also prevent forest fires. Jesus, like seriously, every other line of his is just silence and you can't skip it. Like, I come on, please. Please, I can only take so much of the same thing. You know, if the victory you seek and the war you're waging will always lie beyond your grasp. Guys, please, come on, please! <laughs> I'm begging you to stop! I think I understand now. I've, I've made up my mind. It's already a visual novel. We have to go through so much text. Don't like fucking grind me over the coals with this. In this moment, I will suspend my siege defense indefinitely. Wait, are you actually gonna come out? Oh, you're an, oh! Chair. Okay, you know what? Still though, the oh. oh boy. Oh. It's a little girl! What? <laughs> okay! Hello! Huh? <laughs> Hello? Oh, <laughs> she's adorable, but still. Oh god. S S Sergeant Pluff reporting for duty. No, I knew that one was the child, but I thought it was a son. What the fuck? Okay. What? I, I, 
I thought you were a guy. You're definitely not the gruff drill sergeant I envisioned. Well, my mama was in the Russian army. I was just as shocked, but it certainly explained a few things when I found out too. May I introduce to you Miss Army Buff, age 12. Because he's Archie Buff, because he loves archaeology, and she's an army buff. She's a military. Fuck you! Fucking... <sighs> God, this game, this fucking puns, I'm done with this bullshit! I just, I can't, guys. I can't take this anymore. I'm so done. This army buff. Age 12. No way. Careful, soldier. Don't forget I could blow you away at a moment's notice. She's just too cute. So, have you always been in a wheelchair, Sarge? Negative. Only since I was injured in the fire. Yeah, wow. S fucking insensitive, Apollo. It should be obvious. Um, your voice sounds awfully different than before. Oh, look at her, though! My drone features a voice modulation device. It's just one of my army's many technological marvels. Well, you fooled me. I thought some 20-something military fanatic was at the controls. I'm not gonna lie. I really thought it was gonna be some, like, fucking, like, shut-in. Like, yeah. Like, th that's exactly what I thought, too. <laughs> but no. If it's all the same to you, troops, I'd like to continue my testimony. I've just remembered something, and it's as crisp and clear as a trumpet at roll call. What did you remember? It wasn't my mother who appeared in the burning orb. It was some lady Papa had shown me in a picture of a long time ago. He said it was, uh... The Holy Mother, the founder of Karenism. She appeared right there, right in the burning orb. Huh? Oh, maybe, maybe, um, when light is cast on it, it shows a projection of the Holy Mother. Um, uh, okay, well, this is a new development. Noise level, zero. The Holy Mother of Karenism was inside the burning orb? What does that even mean? I have a bad feeling about this. Yeah, Phoenix. Could it be? Could this explain what, what Sarge means by the Holy Mother appearing in the burning orb? Offer thy prayers as fervent as fi- Oh! Nice! Take that! Take that! Dr. Buff's research notes? What do they have to do with this? Look at this, the burning orb, the appearance of the founder, this part points to both. Yeah, that part. Oh yeah, I was like, which button do I press? Jesus. There's a legend about the orb involving a mysterious riddle. And this song, in turn, is said to contain the key to solving it. If the legend is true, then I believe the answer lies in this part of the song. Offer thy prayers as fervent as fire. Only then shall the Holy Mother return. Well, anyone see where I'm going with this? Prayers as fervent as fire. Ah! You're supposed to set the orb on fire? The whole stanza seems to suggest that the Founder will appear if the orb is set on fire. Wait, this is so the Doctor, he! Yes, Athena. He had solved the ancient riddle of the Founder's orb. Oh my! I feel like there's not a whole lot left in this trial. Um, so once I finish this trial, then I'll go ahead and do that for you before we end the stream, Liv. Papa was a great archaeologist, so I believe in him, and I want to believe, I want to believe he achieved his long time dream of solving that riddle before he died. Well, we won't know for sure until we try it for ourselves. Yes, do it, Private Justice, please. 
I want to see what Papa was searching for with my own eyes. Objection. The, uh, the plaintiff must <laughs> object to this. Objection. The plaintiff will stand down and be quiet. Objection. You don't have the right to set a precious relic like that on fire. Objection. Oh, but I do. All I needed was Sarge's permission. Since we still don't know if this treasure is the Founder's Orb or the Crystal- It still belongs to her! Holy shit! Any ownership rights to the do- the Dr. Nad had- had now belonged to his daughter. Oh shit, okay, you know what, valid. Therefore, you have absolutely no right to stop us! God, no, I hate it when he's right. We need a lot of objections. Very well, Mr. Justice. I never thought I'd be saying this, but you may burn the evidence. All right, here we go. Um, let's put it on a safe place before we burn it. Is that the same? Is, is that the same uh, <laughs> lighter from the other game that was actually a tiny gun? Okay. Oh, it's he whoa! What? Look! What? Uh, Apollo, the inside of the orb—it's melting. What? There's something in there. It's the, it's the fucking, it's her, she has a face! Oh, she cute. D Dirk, isn't she? Yeah, it's probably Wax, yeah. Her garb leaves no room for doubt. It's the founder herself and she's hot. Face and all. Yeah, damn. Oh, hi, Dirk. I, I don't understand. The greatest of taboos in Koreanism is the depiction of the Founder's face. Well, maybe that was added on later, like, you know, a lot of religions do. <clears throat> Yet here it is, hidden within this orb. Founder's orb updated in the court record. Heating the Founder's orb revealed the statue within. Well, then how did he put the wax back in there? Sorry, Mr. Wright, but as you can see, the issue is crystal clear. Uh, uh. This figure is the Holy Mother, founder of Koreanism. And based on that, this must be none other than the Founder's Orb. Objection. Should have had a counter for Death Slams. It's way too many. A million. B be that as it may, Mr. Aribal still may have killed the doctor. Then, like, it's just like, maybe? I mean, God, it's so weird to think about it, but. If so, it would render the orb transfer agreement null and void. Don't play dumb, Mr. Wright. The truth of the matter has already been proven. Dr. Buff wasn't killed right after Sarge saw Mr. Arribal. It happened after the doctor came back from hiding the orb. And you're no proof that Mr. Arabal was still around at the time. Uh, yeah, Phoenix, give it up. Take that L, bro. Your claim that the Defiant Dragons were behind the crime doesn't hold water. Like I held water when I was stuck in that cave for a while. But let's not worry about that. And that means that the orb transfer agreement is still perfectly valid. Uh, yeah, take it. Admit it, Mr. Wright. I just burned your whole case to the ground! Yeah. Uh, no! Fuck. I won? I. I actually won? Did, 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 did I do it? I did it! <laughs> did I do it though? Mr. Wright, would you care to respond? Oh no, he has serious face. Respond? Uh, never mind, it went away. I didn't think so. Wait, did we just win? Did we actually beat the turnabout terror? You're amazing, Apollo. D -d -d Don't just stand there, right? Do something. Um, well, I don't think there's any digging out of this hole. 
Mr. Addison Wimperson, I think it's time for your concession speech. <laughs> I have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is the Founder's Orb. The facts don't lie, but you obviously do. How's that for a campaign slogan? Fuck me. Apollo, damn, you're going through for the juggler. Why, you contemptuous peasant? Uh, hmm. I think this is a good time to wrap up this trial. If both parties have no further objections, I will render my verdict. No objections here, Your Honor. Ah, uh, um, well, no obje- Nope. Of course, he has an objection. You can't do this! The crystal is mine! Now he sounds like some evil villain. It's my crystal! No one can have it! I'll lose the election if I lose that crystal! I'm sorry, but there's really nothing more I can do. You haven't forgotten about our little chat, have you? What? 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 Excuse me, what does that mean? Uh, what's going on here? Objection! Your Honor, I... I object to the defense's last claim. What? Excuse me. What? I don't believe they have truly proven that the relic is indeed the Founder's Orb. <laughs> Mr. Wright, I don't think even you could bluff your way out of this one. What possible argument could you have to claim that this isn't the Founder's Orb? Um, about that. Uh... Oh, of course! What? You can't possibly have hit on something. The defense's assertion is incomplete, and this is why. The defense is basing their claim that this is the rel this relic is the Founder's Orb on a legend, and that legend claims the Founder will return when the riddle is solved at last. Uh, right, and that's what happened. The Founder was revealed for all to see. And hurrah, we win! But Mr. Justice, what about the rest of the legend? Huh? According to the legend, once the Founder has returned, she would bestow spiritual power onto the person who solved the riddle. Y you're, you're kidding, right? Bro, th we know, come on. Well, Mr. Justice, do you feel great spiritual power coursing through your veins? Phoenix, what the fuck? Um, no. But, but receiving spiritual powers and stuff, it's all just mystic mumbo jumbo, right? Maybe so, but you're the one basing your claim on said legend. And what we saw here does not fully fulfill it, does it? Wow, Phoenix. I mean, you got a point, but also what the fuck? N no, but uh... Consequently, you cannot rightfully claim that this is the Founder's Orb. Ah, son of a... Come on, man. Oh, everybody's quiet again. Remember that? Remember the times when we look at everybody and then we don't say anything for like 30 seconds? What's gotten into him? Why is Mr. Wright doing this? I don't know, man. It sounded like something bad is happening to someone. Hmm, it would appear that Mr. Wright has lost a few of his marbles. Yeah. Th that couldn't be further from the truth, Your Honor. In any case, I believe this is a good time for a recess. Both sides will have 20 minutes to prepare. I ask that all arguments be ready by then. Oh, and Mr. Wright, you'd do well to wash up and find your missing marbles by then, too. <sighs> okay, cool. Thank you. Another recess? How many recesses are we gonna have? I just want to be done with this. Please. May 17th, District Court. Defendant Lobby Number 3. Ugh, I really wish that that type wasn't so slow. Mr. Wright sure is acting funny. I mean, he's famous for going out on a limb, but that last assertion was just plain crazy. It's either a bluff or a Hail Mary. Either way, it doesn't make much sense. Hey, Trucy. Maybe there's something we're missing here. Although, he seemed perfectly normal when we spoke earlier, because he's good at lying to you, Trucy. Apollo, I have a bad feeling about this. I'm gonna go check up on him. What's going on with you, Mr. Wright? Hey, Private Justice. Oh, it's you! Hi, Sarge. Oh, she's still adorable. 
I forgot to mention something. On the night of Papa's murder, a strange thing happened. Oh, but why are you only telling me about it now? Well, I didn't say anything before because I thought Papa's death was an accident. But now that we know otherwise, I figured it might be important. Still more to this case? Oh boy. When I left my room and lost consciousness, I passed out right here. That's right, uh, that's right above the coffee bar. Mm-hmm, but when I came to, someone was pushing my wheelchair. Ah, oh, that's terrifying. What? I was so scared I beat a hasty retreat as fast as my wheels could take me. Do you know who it was? No, it was pitch black. Plus I fled to my room so fast I didn't even have a chance to turn on the lights. Maybe it was your father. No, he would have said something to me. Besides, I'd have known if it was him. I feel like, you know what, I've, I've never been in a wheelchair before, but I feel like if you're in there for any amount of time, like, you can kind of like, and if somebody pushes you like every day, you probably get used to like the momentum or just the way they do it. So you probably can like differentiate between different people. Cause you know, it's another one of those things where like where one sense is kind of dulled or not usable, then another one is sharpened. So you probably just like kind of get used to like knowing when specific people do specific things. So then it could have been your father's real killer? My thoughts exactly. But you didn't report this to the police. It didn't even occur to me. Well, yeah, remember she was in a lot of like distress, sir. It's okay, you were obviously still upset, so don't beat yourself up over it. Apollo, this could be really important information. I think the act of pushing Sarge's wheelchair could be part of some bigger scheme. It's hard to see why else the killer would have done such a thing. Guess I should take her statement down as evidence. Army statement added to the court record. Okay. Oh, welcome back, Athena. Athena, what the fuck? Huh? What's with the long face? How'd it go with Mr. Wright? What should I... Athena? Oops, uh, sorry, zoned out there for a sec. <laughs> the recess is almost over, so let's go. <laughs> Don't fucking cover that shit. You were just like about to cry, lady. What was that all about? Okay, time to use some of that psychology on Athena, I guess. Jesus Christ, Twitch. Twitch has like fucking done a push notification like three times of something happening on there and I'm getting kind of pissed off. Like Twitch, I don't care if I didn't if I didn't swipe up the first time, why would I do it the second or third time? All right, court is once again back in session. Now, um, Mr. Wright, about that last objection you raised. Uh, we, the plaintiff, still believe that the defense has yet to sufficiently prove its case. They claim that, according to legend, the Founder's orb would bestow spiritual power, and yet the relic in question has failed to do so. Therefore, it has failed its own test. Uh, I see. He's sticking with that ridiculous argument. Furthermore, even if it is the Founder's orb, it can't be awarded to the Defiant Dragons. After all, they were the ones who killed Dr. Buff. Objection. What are you talking about? That was already proven to be false. There are no grounds for asserting that the Defiant Dragons murdered the doctor. Oh, but I'm afraid there are, Mr. Justice. Your Honor, I would like to present new testimony to this court. New testimony, excuse me? Testimony that will show that Dots Arabal did in fact kill Dr. Buff. What? Very well, you may call your witness. I guess Mr. Wright found another angle. What new testimony could be this late in the game? It's you again, dickface. I do not like this guy. Fellow citizens, it is I, Paul Atchison, the once and future representative of the people. Uh, 
God, I don't want to. Yeah, she's not him again. My client divulged new information to me during the recess. He remembered something he saw, you see? Something crucial to this case. How very convenient. Yeah, exactly. That's his crime. It was about 11 at night and I was out on a mobile meet and greet around the village. It's 11 at night. Well, who does a meet and greet at 11 at night? That's when I saw Dr. Buff being murdered from outside his study window. So you're changing your testimony. Here I did. Yeah, probably. I mean, that's how most people do it here. Mr. Arbel snuck up behind him and struck him on the head. His weapon of choice? A suitcase. What? A big strong man like him could easily swing a heavy suitcase onto someone's head. What? No, that doesn't mean the, the suitcase doesn't really have any like as sharp edges. You saw the murder happen? Are you telling us this now because <laughs> I saved the best part for last. It's a tactic known to all political greats. Wow, no, that just sounds like a load of horse shit. The murder weapon was a complete mystery, but my client's eyewitness account has finally brought it into the light. Have you had that thing tested for blood? According to the autopsy report, Dr. Buff was struck in the head by a corner of some object. I suppose that could very well be the corner of a suitcase that's very rounded and not sharp. Objection! What the fuck? Yeah, exactly. That's just, that's going to be my objection. If I'm, I'm just going to be like, objection. What the fuck? And they're going to be like, Ex what? And I'll be like, yeah, I said what I said. But eyewitness testimony isn't the same as hard evidence. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. What does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? We have physical evidence too. A luminol test revealed. What? The doctor's blood on Mr. Arabel's suit. What? R really? But how does that prove Mr. Arabel used it as a weapon? Objection. Ugh, your dab. You should know the answer to that, Mr. Justice. Since you know as well as I that the suitcase is covered in his fingerprints. Well, yeah, because he, it's a suitcase. Yeah, we dusted it right in front of Emma. Oh, come on. The turnabout terror strikes again. Hmm. Well, this is quite a convincing testimony and evidence, is it? Nevertheless, you may proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Justice. Cross-examination. That's his crime. I ran 11 at night and I was out on a mobile meet and greet. Yeah, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. Hold it. Hold it. He snuck up from behind? So you're saying the doctor never even realized Mr. Arabal was there? That's right. He was utterly absorbed in a book. I see. What did you see Mr. Arabal do next? He climbed up the bookshelf ladder and dumped a bunch of books down on the body. I believe he was trying to make it look like an accident. But that idiot didn't realize I could see everything from outside the window. One of those statements doesn't feel right. Your Honor, I believe the witness made an important statement about just about how. That's is an idiot. Yeah, the doctor was reading a book. The doctor was reading a book at the time of the murder. That's vital testimony. Why did you leave that out, you jerk? Very well, the witness will please add that statement to his testimony. The doctor was standing in front of the bookshelves, absorbed in a book. Wait, 
great, yeah. Okay, wait a second. I, you know what? I talked about this earlier. His glasses were just sitting on his desk. How the hell was he supposed to read that book? That is motherfucking reading glasses. Objection. 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 There we go. Sometimes it doesn't. Always. The doctor was standing in front of the bookshelves, absorbed in a book, you say. I'm sorry, but it seems your testimony is completely unreliable. That's quite a bold statement. Well, let's hear you back it up. I challenge you to prove that I'm anything but 100% reliable. Wow, well, I could prove that like 30 times over. It would be my pleasure. Lately, it seems the doctor's eyes had gotten so bad that he needed reading glasses. However, his reading glasses were over on his desk. So you see, there's no way he could have been reading in front of the bookshelves. Dart! Oh, he broke it again. Sorry, Mr. Addison Wimperson, but uh, I'm gonna have to ask you to explain this discrepancy to the voting public. Yeah, uh, 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 I, uh, I, um, you what? I'll explain it, you lowly cur. I simply made a mistake, you see. The doctor was actually sitting at his desk when Mr. Aribal hit him over the head. But then the doctor would have been facing him. Surely he would have seen him and tried to run. The doctor buff was nodding off. I could tell because his eyes were closed and he wasn't moving. Sounds more like what you would do. Yeah. What you would do, sorry. Then how do you explain the fact that he was struck in the back of the head? Isn't that something that should be impossible from the front of the desk? Oh, um, uh, about that. He, he bowed his head when he nodded off. That's when he was clubbed. So that's what you saw. Well, Mr. Justice, that sounds like a perfectly reasonable explanation to me that's been changed three times, but still is totally reasonable. Do you have a problem with the proposal? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, big problem, you dumb jerk. There is a problem, a very big problem. The witness's statement doesn't hold up under the slightest bit of scrutiny. <clears throat> is that so? Then will you please show us this, this court what evidence you have to justify this? Gladly, your honor. <clears throat> this shows the problem with the witness's claim that he saw the doctor nodding off. I think it has to do with the diagram. So the bookshelf is there. Oh, okay, because if he was outside, um, if he was nodding off in his chair, then that wouldn't work. <clears throat> A diagram of the study? Mr. Addison Wimperson allegedly viewed the murder from here. <clears throat> and the doctor was allegedly nodding off here. But from his vantage point, the bookcase would have blocked the witness's line of sight. Why, yes, I believe you're right. But, 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 but uh, arg! Yeah. Just keep cracking that, bro. Objection! The fact remains my client knew that the suitcase was the murder weapon. So he definitely has first-hand knowledge of the crime scene. I'm afraid I have to agree with you there, Mr. Wright. <laughs> but then we have to ask ourselves, from what vantage point did he see the murder? What are you insinuating, Mr. Justice? Well, he's a fucking cheating murderer. From the vantage point, that vantage, or from what vantage point could Mr. Attishan Wimperson have seen the dozing doctor? Once we determine that, I believe we'll finally see the truth behind this incident. Mm -hmm. It's just inside the study. Take that! You've got to be kidding! But, but that's... It is indeed, but everything only makes sense if the witness was there in the study. Inside the study? But that's the scene of the crime! I... 
Yes, I know this, Athena. That's why I said it. I know. Mr. Addison Wimperson, the man who claims to be a witness to the murder, was most certainly in that very room. Uh, Apollo, are you suggesting? Yeah. Mr. Attishan Wimperson, weren't you the one who actually swung that suitcase? <laughs> what you're proposing is ludicrous. My client is a small, thin man, whereas Mr. Arebal has the musculature to pull it off. He has a point. And I gave up trying to lift that thing after one go, but you're also a freaking bean. That's right! He's the only one who could have lifted such a heavy object. Now do you understand? The rebel Dats Arabal is the doctor's killer. As long as the suitcase is the murder weapon, the suspicion falls entirely on Dats. You have to poke a hole in Mr. Wright's argument somehow, Apollo. No, oh, I will. With his own technique, no less. If Mr. Attish and Wimperson couldn't swing the suitcase around, we'll just have to consider another way he could have used it as a murder weapon instead. I'm gonna turn this case on its head, Mr. Wright, just like you taught me. You talk big, Mr. Justice, but do you have what it takes? Yeah, I do. Well, this should be interesting. Mr. Addison Wimperson's testimony has been filled with one inaccuracy after another. First, he stated that Dr. Buff was in front of the bookshelves. Now he claims that the doctor was sitting at his desk. So where was the victim really when he was killed? Also, where was his killer and how was the murder weapon really used? Oh no, he... I bet he fucking pushed him down and he hit his head on the, <laughs> the suitcase. So the important thing here is the position of the victim and killer relative to each other. Yes, your honor. If they were positioned in a certain way, it would be possible to use the suitcase as a weapon without lifting a finger. You can't mean. I would ask the court to recall the study's layout. They dropped it exactly. It's quite distinctive as you can see. Now, if Dr. Buff were sitting in a certain spot and his killer was at a certain another spot, the suitcase would become a weapon anyone could use. Oh, shit. Hmm, very well, Mr. Justice. Where was Dr. Buff's killer at the time of the crime? At the coffee bar. Take that. How could the murder have been committed from there? Yes, I would love to see a demonstration. Is that not correct? Uh, I can't from here. Well, I have a demonstration for you from here. Okay. God, I know it's a... God, why do they have to be, like, so specific? Killer didn't swing the suitcase. There aren't many other ways to use it as a weapon. I know, and there's a... Wait, like... Up here? Never mind. What the fuck? I know it. Oh, oh, wait, wait, no. God, I wait. A... No, but how did he get it up there? He didn't. Okay, never mind. I guess he was up top. Did he drop it? But they keep talking about how nobody could fucking lift the thing. Then how could he bring it up like a shitty spiral staircase and then drop it? Fuck this game sometimes, because seriously, they're like, he couldn't lift it. He had to lift it up those stairs to even use it as a weapon. Like, seriously, where is the logic? Got two failures because I thought he just like pushed him on it or something. Oh, that's. This should wrap things up nice and pretty for you, Mr. Wright. I would ask the court to recall the study's layout, but this time instead of thinking in two dimensions, Let's think in three. Only then can we clearly see the killer's method at work. Like, w w when did the suitcase... Was it up there to begin with then? Did Arabal leave it there? 
The killer didn't have to swing the suitcase. If he used gravity to his advantage, that is. Yeah, well, cause like, there was no indication that it was ever up top. So I just had to be like, oh yeah, that's totally, yeah. That's right, it was the plaintiff, one Paul Ashton Wimperson, or a Addison, that is such a stupid name, who used the suitcase. Also, welcome back, Kat. He pushed it from the second floor, and sent it hurtling down onto Dr. Buff, who was sitting at the coffee bar. I feel like if the suitcase was as heavy as they have said, it would have literally just like smashed his skull in and not just given him like a small concussion. Like, come on. If it was as heavy as you said from that height, it, sh it should have just like literally brained the man. Fuck this game. Like seriously, come on. I'm pretty sure it would have done a lot more damage than just like one like bloody spot on the back of his head. Psychology book had been at the coffee bar, no doubt. The doctor must have set it down there after he'd finished reading it or the like. But his blood got on it, which is why the killer thought to hide it in that mountain of books. Objection! And that's quite an entertaining theory you have there, Mr. Justice. But there's no evidence that the murder took place at the coffee bar. I'm not so sure about that, Mr. Wright. Uh, yeah, the coffee bar, it, well, it has to exist. If it doesn't exist, then my theory holds no water, and fuck me, I guess. The evidence does exist, and I'm going to show it to you. Y you are? Oh, yeah, because the coffee stain. On the book. Take that! This brown stain was determined to be coffee. What's more, it was still a bit damp when we saw it yesterday morning. Ah! One look at this book speaks volumes, I'm afraid, Mr. Wright. Please stop with the puns. I'm, I can't do this anymore. I'm so tired. I've been playing this game for what feels like years. It tells us the doctor was having a cup of coffee at the coffee bar. That's when the suitcase came hurtling down, striking him on the head. Causing both his blood and his coffee to splatter onto it. Ah, darn! Uh, well, Mr. Attishan Wimperson. What, 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 what motive could I possibly have had to kill Dr. Buff? And there it is, that final excuse cornered killers are so fond of. Well, the doctor never returned your crystal to you, did he? Instead, he hid it in the cave ruins. Ugh. Telling him that the defiant dragons were a dangerous bunch was a huge blunder. All it did was make him hide the orb. Your lie came back to bite you in the end. Uh. Even worse, the doctor saw the news report, so he knew the relic was the founder's orb. Being the conscientious researcher he was, he knew he had to return it to its rightful place. And that meant keeping it out of your hands. Arrgh! You were so angry that he refused to return the relic to you. That you killed him with your own hands. Isn't that right, Mr. Addison Wimperson? You never heard hurtling before? Yeah, hurtling is just like something moving at like a fast speed. Pretty much. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. Darg! Yeah, I, I want that thing to just shatter. Your grandpa's cool plaque. I, 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 th th that is, uh. Come on, Phoenix, what are you doing? Uh, Apollo, don't, please don't accuse my client of murder. Huh? What do you mean, don't accuse him? Why would you even say that, Mr. Wright? Uh, what I meant was, um, he's a promising politician with a bright- 
oh my god did they really just pull out that fucking line just like they do that line with every like person who does some horrible shit but it's like nah he's just some kid he's got his future ahead of him who the fuck cares he did some bullshit he's got to go to jail no it's in our nation's best interest to avoid burdening him with the taint of scandal wow this strikes way too fucking close to home guys Ooh, fucking Phoenix Wright. No. Say what? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Right, you'd better do something to change the current courtroom client er, climate, or I'll be charged with murder. And you know what will happen to her if that happens. Wow. That's a threat if I've ever fucking heard one. Ugh. What's he talking about? Well, I can ponder that later. For now, Mr. Wright, you can't possibly believe that Mr. Arevall is the killer. Are you really going to send an innocent man to prison? I thought you were better than that. Yeah, not as a hitman, that's for sure, yeah. Yeah, he's just a nice white kid. That's exactly what I was thinking. He didn't mean to. <laughs> they were drunk. No. Fuck that. Go to jail. Yeah, you're gonna ruin his future. How how could you do that? He's so promising. Well, so are like several other million people. Whatever. Well, Mr. Wright, answer me. Uh, um. Oh, no, now he's freaking out. Mr. Wright, what in the world's going on here? Uh, should we psychology test him? The final case just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you won't say anything then. Mr. Attishan Wimperson, the defense hereby. Uh, Apollo, wait! Not you too, Athena! Um, it's just, uh. I wasn't sure whether I should say anything, but, uh. During that last recess, when I went to check on Mr. Wright, I overheard something I shouldn't have. I trust Maya is unharmed. I can't really say, but just remember, if I'm arrested or fail to obtain the treasure, there will be consequences. Consequences of the worst kind, if you catch my drift. God, Maya, can you stop being kidnapped for five minutes? Sir McWimp, McWimp, sorry to say the consequences of your actions happen because your choice is not ours, exactly. Ugh. Relax, all you have to do is ensure I get my hands on that relic. I must deliver it to my benefactor at all costs. What do they want that relic for anyway? <laughs> it's something to do with an old legend. My patron thinks the great power is said to be granted to whoever solves its secret. Maya? As in Maya Faye? Yes, the boss's legendary former assistant. She's hot now. Miss Faye's being held hostage? Uh, so it seems. Why didn't you tell me as soon as you heard this? Sorry, it's just, uh, Mr. Wright spotted me before I could slip away and made me promise not to tell you. He said it would make things more difficult if you found out. Ah, as if things weren't already hard enough. That's what she said. <laughs> So that's why Mr. Wright was acting so strange. Fuck, 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 fuck. That's what's going on inside his head. I had no idea. This must have been excruciating for him. Eyes like the cousin on Red Dead Redemption Online who keeps getting kidnapped every week. Oh, I think justice, there's gotta be something you can do. Mr. Justice, about that last statement of yours, I believe you are in the middle of accusing the plaintiff of murdering Dr. Boff. Would you care to continue? Ah, I... I... Ah, I'm sorry, Apollo. I'm really, really sorry. What's gotten into you two? Uh... If I accuse that slime bag, I put Miss Faye's life in jeopardy. I mean, let's be fair, her life is always in jeopardy. <laughs> it seems you finally caught on. I'm far too important to be accused of murder. After all, our nation's future rests squarely on my shoulders. Ugh, either I give up or...
Once I present the crystal to my patron, my victory is assured. Then one day I'll become president and then king. That's not how that works. I'll have every politician at my command. Now retract your accusation. I can't kowtow to him, but the defense would... It would like to retract the previous... Uh, Oh, 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 is that Daddy? Hi, Daddy. Apollo. Is it Dirk? I don't know what's going on here, but a lawyer should never look the way you do right now. With defeat and resignation written all over your face. Is he gonna say the it? Dragon never yields. He said it! He said the line! Okay, guys, good night. We. The game is over, he said the line. He's like, don't make me point at the sign. Even when wounded, a dragon bites down hard and never lets go till its dying breath. It glares, it roars, and it latches its jaws firmly onto its prey till the bitter end. That's what lawyers do to get the truth. Dirk, a dragon never yields. He's right! It's all over if I give up now. If Mr. Wright's hands are tied, it's up to me to do what must be done. He saved my neck so many times. Now it's my turn to save his. Dirk, uh, thanks for that wake-up call. <laughs> now that's the face of a lawyer you've got there, son. Where there's a will, there's a way. And I'm gonna find the way to save Ms. Fay and see that justice is served. Uh, whoa, brain. Brain. The scumbag is holding Ms. Fay hostage to ensure he gets the orb for his patron. And it seems said patron believes in the orb's legend. The thing is, we fa the founder did appear when the orb was exposed to fire, just as the legend said. Yeah, he called us- he calls us son a lot, actually. No, not yet. We have not solved the riddle yet! The legend says the founder will bestow great spiritual power when she returns, but if that's true, it means we haven't solved the whole riddle yet. How can that be? Are we missing something? Wait, maybe. Maybe that part about the founder returning should be taken literally. Fuck! Because, oh god, they have to know their face and their name. So nobody could channel the founder. Nobody could channel the Holy Mother until they saw her face. That's why they're not allowed to see her face. Fuck! <laughs> because otherwise anybody could channel her. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, that's... Okay, that's start... Oh, this makes a lot of sense now. Yeah, there is a way for the dead to return spirit channeling, because they have to know their name and their face. Yeah, you have to know what they look like. Oh, shit. But the orb has revealed her face to us, so what if it's a sign that we should channel her? Yeah, holy shit. Given the facts, in order to solve the riddle and receive the Founder's power, I need a spirit medium. Oh my god, are we gonna put- are we gonna put the Founder into pearls? Ah! Ah, shit! Yeah, I oh. The ability of a medium to channel spirits- well, I don't know if pearls can even do it quite yet. Shit. It means Mr. Addison Wimperson's patron will need one too. And once that slimy politician realizes that, he won't be able to lay a finger on Ms. Faye. Wow. That's all inside my pointy brain. Everything's going to be okay, Mr. Wright. Because Mr. Paul Addison Wimperson can't afford to lay a hand, uh, or afford to harm a hair on Ms. Faye's head. Huh? Yeah, Phoenix, how are you so dumb, bro? Why are you so bra drum? Mr. Attison Wimperson, it seems you've chosen the wrong person to take hostage. What do you mean? 
Your patron seeks to solve the orb's riddle, and thereby receive great spiritual power. However, only Maya Fey can truly give them what they really want. She can? What do you mean, only Maya Fey? Think about what the return of the Founder really means. We should have considered it more literally. After all, yeah, because Apollo Justice is when Apollo first shows up. And then Dual Destinies has more of both the boys. After all, the orb was made in the kingdom of Korain, the birthplace of spirit mediums. Ah, oh, I think I see now. You need to know what the deceased looks like in order to channel them. But in Koreanism, depicting the face of the founder is taboo. However, her true face was hidden in the orb. So maybe the orb is telling us to try channeling the founder. Exactly! Through a spirit medium, the founder can quite literally return. And if the legend is true, the founder just might bestow spiritual power on someone when she does. It's like when Pearls imbued my Magatama with spiritual power. If a human could be imbued with such power in a similar manner, it is said that the Founder possesses immense spiritual power. Such a great feat would not necessarily be beyond her. Wait a second! Th then the legend is true? Do you understand now, Mr. Attishan Wimperson? You are holding host the hostage the final key to unlocking the orb's secret. And if anything were to happen to her, the riddle would remain unsolved forever. Ah! Yeah, get fucked. Holy crap, guys. Th 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 there's always Pearl Fay. I could simply ask her to help. No, she's not. I mean, I love Pearl, but she's not a full-fledged spirit medium yet. If she wants money, I have plenty to offer. She's not the kind of person to be tempted by material gain. And she certainly wouldn't help you if it, anything were to happen to her cousin. Yeah, exactly. Or maybe you'd like to go ask the Queen of Korain to channel the Founder for you. He could, but he'd probably get executed for requesting such a thing. It's over. Now confess! You killed Dr. Buff, didn't you? Dak! Uh, it wasn't supposed to end this way! Mr. Attish and Wimpersim, are you admitting to committing the crime? Dar, uh, um, I... You're my lawyer, right? Do something! Uh, it's true that I'm your lawyer, and as such, it's my job to defend you. However, defending my client isn't the only duty a lawyer has. There's something else that's equally as important. Finding the truth. I knew it, you dumb bitch. Ask her after kidnapping her cousin exactly. Like, mm -mm. And that is finding the truth. He said the line. But what? Mr. Addison Wimperson, you have sought to twist the truth in the dirtiest of ways. I was complicit in your hostage taking, but in a way, I was being held hostage too. Even so, there's still hope for me to make things right. And I owe it to all to you, Apollo. Mr. Wright? I can't allow a murderer to walk away scot-free. Therefore, Mr. Attishan Wimperson, I must resign as your attorney. No, 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 no! Does this mean I'm under arrest? No! Get fucked! Mm. <laughs> There's so much tape on that thing now! God, please, 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 stop with that. I'm so tired of that. Well, I've nothing to confess. What? I said I've nothing to confess. I don't and I won't, especially not to a plebeian like you. This guy doesn't know when to give up. Besides, there's no truth to these allegations. I mean, look at the suitcase. You won't find a single print of mine on it. All that means is you wipe them off, taking care to only leave Mr. Aribals. 
<laughs> as many a great politician has said before me, no comment. In that case, try switching things up, Apollo. Look at the situation from a different angle. Is there really nothing that points to the suitcase being dropped from up above? Hmm, evidence that points to the suitcase being dropped from the second floor. Hmm. Oh, I know exactly what it- yeah, heh, If the killer pushed the suitcase from the second floor hallway over the coffee bar... That would place him right around here. Ah, maybe, just maybe. Thought of something, Apollo? I believe this piece of evidence to be connected to the dropping of the suitcase. Remember, we got a statement from one Miss Army, uh... Oh, wait. Cause she, the suitcase, he had to move her out of the way to drop the suitcase. And she fled to her room. That. that appears to be a statement, but how is that related to this case? On the night of the murder, your honor, Miss Army Buff physically left her room. That's when she saw the doctor burning the orb and subsequently passed out. Right above the coffee bar. But with her there in her wheelchair, the killer wouldn't have been able to drop the suitcase down to the do or down onto the doctor. Good point. However, according to Sarge, she woke up just as someone was trying to move her in her wheelchair. Ah! Yeah, someone was pushing my wheelchair. What? I was so scared I beat a hasty retreat as fast as my wheels could take me. No. She must have been in the killer's way and had to be moved. Isn't that right, Mr. Attishan Wimperson? Which means his handprints are gonna be on the fucking wheelchair! And if the killer had pushed the wheelchair with his bare hands, we may yet find the conclusive evidence we need. Exactly. Fortunately for us, that evidence slipped right through the killer's fingers. If only he had been able to hold on to it just a little tighter. But now he is neither able to discord nor alter it. Discard, sorry. Honestly, that piece of evidence wasn't even supposed to be here in this courtroom today. And yet, it looks like sometimes things do get better. Good job, Phoenix. Uh, but, 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 th 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 this wasn't supposed to happen. No? Well, too bad, because the evidence that sped away from you that night has come back to haunt you right here at this very trial. Arg! Your Honor, the defense's final piece of evidence is this person. Take that! Take the child! But that's... On the night of the murder, Sarge passed out only to come to and find that someone was pushing her wheelchair. Oh shit, hi Zunder, you're coming in at like the fucking crux that we heat, we reach the pinnacle of part one of fucking episode five. Jesus Christ, this is, dude, I've been streaming for six hours and this is only half of the final shit. Like Jesus Christ, this is too much. Ah. Uh. That's when she fled back into her room. She didn't physically see a single soul after that. Not until Athena drew her out through that therapy session, that is. Ah, fucking. While the killer was able to wipe the prints on the suitcase, the same can't be said for the prints that got away. Uh, uh, my fellow Coranians. No, fuck you. Well, Mr. Paul Addison Wimperson, try to explain your way out of this one. The podium is all yours. Uh, uh, Paul Addison, savior of Coran. I, I am not a crook. I, my political career, it can't end like this. I'm destined for great things. Something's wrong. It's not the end. It's a dream. Uh. Huh? Election results, huh? Wait, really? Huh? Oh, <laughs> what is wrong with this man? No, no way. 
Banzai! 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 Arrested on murder charges and stripped of his electoral win! Wait, what? No, uh, please! Wait, don't go! No, no! Ah! <laughs> Grandpa! Wow, fuck this guy. Yeah. Wow. You're having some issues. <gasps> it broke! I knew it! <laughs> Good, get that- get out of here, you dick! Uh, Mr. Addison Wimperson, are you alright? Bailiff, get him to the first aid station, on the double! Also, check that wheelchair for fingerprints. Well, this was yet another unexpected turn of events. In light of everything that's been revealed, it seems that the relic is indeed the Founder's Orb. And it seems Mr. Paul Attishan Wimperson can be considered a suspect in Dr. Buff's murder. Apollo, I want to thank you for everything. Thanks to you, I didn't have to keep bending the truth. I don't know what I would have done without you. Probably something stupid. Yeah, don't mention it! <laughs> You're amazing today, Apollo! Well, I couldn't have done it without Dirk. Thanks, Dad. Is he gonna say it? A dragon never <laughs> yields. Of course he's gonna say it! Every time, just gotta wait for that voice. Even, yeah, even when we rest down until it's fine, bread that glares at wars and it latches just firmly onto its prey until the bitter end. Cool, that's what I was trying to do. Okay, cool! Dragon never yields. Every lawyer should take that to heart. Yeah, well, that's usually how Phoenix does things. As it seems both sides have no further objections, would Dirk Sadmati please take the stand? This court awards the orb to the Defiant Dragons per the stated transfer agreement. Hooray! Not guilty! I guess. Except for the other guy's guilty, but that, we, we'll worry about that later. We did it. Should the Kingdom of Karain claim ownership, the matter may have to be deliberated in court all over again. I just hope, or shall I say pray, that I am not the judge presiding over that one. Ah, uh, pray, get it, because they're religious? <laughs> uh, shut up, judge. <laughs> Indeed, a trial like that might spark an international incident. Still, there are bigger and more momentous things astir in the air. The revolution. Dirk's really serious about this. This court is adjourned. I need a nap. Ah, we did it, guys. They probably don't show the times anymore, because technically these, uh, these courtroom battles take an hour, but I've been at it for two and a half, so, you know. Nice work, son. We've finally broken through the last obstacle on the road to revolution. Revolution just doesn't seem real. Yes, well, to think you had actually defeated the fighting phoenix. All I can say is, that's my boy! <laughs> well, Mr. Wright did have his hands tied. Who knows if I'd have won if you'd been able to fight me head on. You know, throwing dirt in my eyes and things. I see it more like you saved Mr. Wright. Saved him? Yeah, remember what he said? He didn't have to bend the truth anymore, and it was all thanks to you. I don't know about that. Still, I guess it is kind of nice to be appreciated. Um, Mr. Dirk, now that the Holy Mother's face has been revealed, are you gonna have a spirit medium try to channeling her? I, for one, would love to see the return of the legendary founder. Yeah, just think about it. Being able to speak to someone right out of the history books. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. What? Why? A face isn't enough. You also need the true name of the one you're attempting to channel. Oh, right. Pearl mentioned something like that. And the Founder's true name is only known to the priestess who's been crowned queen. In short, the only living person who knows it is the current queen of Karain, Garan. Oh, so without her help, we won't be seeing the Founder anytime soon. Mmm, that's no fun. Yeah, well, I don't know. There's just a lot going on. Uh, so, Dirk, what'll you do now? 
First, I'll start by tracing the route by which the orb came into Dr. Buff's hands. Since we now know it was Paul Addison that asked the doctor to study it, isn't he the one who stole it? No, a po political nobody like him couldn't get anywhere near the orb, let alone steal it. He must have had inside help. My money is on someone connected to the royal family. Oh right, you said something to that effect back in the cave. Whoever it may be, we need to expose their dirty scheme to the light of day. Well, I'm sure Mr. Wright has plenty of information courtesy of his dirty client. He might be able to shed some light on this. Private justice! Oh, it's back to being this. And that was fine work you did at trial today. You did the s your sergeant proud. She has a voice uh, mod modulator in that, I think. Back at you, Sarge. You took It took real courage to leave your room like that. It's all thanks to you and Corpse Woman Sykes. With my siege of defense over, I can finally sally forth. But the battle's only just begun. One for me and me alone to fight. To lose your mother and then your father. What a terrible thing to endure. Thanks for reminding her. Yeah, and being wheelchair bound doesn't help. Private justice? I've been thinking, uh, it's about time I stood on my own two feet. <gasps> After all, I no longer have Papa to coddle me. Huh? I'm afraid I don't fa- Oh, wait, are we- Take a good look, soldier. This is one small step for man, and one giant leap for me! Oh god, cutscene? Oh, no, or is she just gonna- Uh, hold my drone for me, would you, Private Justice? Uh, yes, sir. What is she up to? Oh no, it is gonna be a scene! Ah! 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 What? Whoa! Ah! Ah! She, she, she's standing? Oh. W what is this, Sarge? You mean your legs there? The doctor told me I was ready to walk uh, again months ago, but if I admitted I could walk, I, I knew I'd have to leave the house. Oh, so yeah, understandable. So I, uh, I faked it. Makes sense. Oh, God. But I kept pretending I couldn't walk, but I know Papa is watching over me now, and I'd hate to disappoint him. So from this day forth, I'm going to march forward with my own two feet. What a brave kid trying to move forward like this. It must be so hard this soon after her father's death. Don't you ever stop. You keep on walking, comrade. Stay brave, because there will be days when you'll want to stop. But I have faith you'll find a way to muster the strength to push through them. Yeah, you can do it. Hey, Daddy's back. Uh, sorry. Um, uh, Phoenix. What's happening? Mr. Wright! What's that look on his face for? Oh, uh, Apollo! Uh, is everything alright with Miss Faye? Uh, she's safe. For now. Uh, well then, we better go save her quick! Everybody, we'll use our massive amount of not funds to go to Karain! Where is she, anyway? I'm afraid I have some bad news. She's dead. Huh? Maya's... Not here in the States. I- Why? Well, come on, I knew that! She's still in Korain. And she's still being held hostage by the mastermind behind this whole thing. The mastermind? We already know who it is. It's the fucking king. That's right. Paul Addison Wimperson was nothing more than a pawn, obviously. He's dumb. Maya's true abductor is in the kingdom of Korain. What? What? I don't understand, Mr. Wright. What in the world's going on over there? A lot. Political struggle? Oh, that's it. That's the end of part one. Oh, but as shocking as that news was, it was only the beginning. The beginning of something big. Big enough to shake Korain to its very core. Revolution. I was being swept up in a mighty wave that nothing could stop. Of course, at the time, I had no idea what the days ahead had in store for us. 
To be continued! Man, that was like a, that was a whole ass episode, but it was only half an episode. Yeah, you guys thought that was it? No, now it's time for the investigation day two, but not today because Jesus, that was over six hours of this. So yeah, we're gonna end on that note.